Here we are once again, folks, with another Armored Warfare replay. Uh, I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn. Today I have for you on a PvE operation uh, meltdown. This is uh, PvE Hardcore uh, Red Queen with the T-55 Enigma, a.k.a. the Super T-55, and myself in the AMX-50. The AMX, we'll begin with some of the history here. Uh, kind of getting a little bit of a rush. Um, the AMX-50 was a heavy tank designed immediately after the Second World War. At the time, the French were still married to the idea of having a light tank, medium tank, and a heavy tank in service. The design process would really begin in 1946 with the AMX M4 prototypes. Two prototypes of the AMX M4 were ordered, and the French army would soon indicate that the protection level offered by its 30 millimeter thickness of steel was unacceptable protection. In response, the armor was increased to 80 millimeters. To save weight, an oscillating turret was installed as well. So the first prototype of the AMX-50 would roll out in 1949. However, by the winter of 1950, a 100 millimeter gun would replace the 90 millimeter gun. Gotta get myself on my own tank here. Just noticed I was on the wrong AMX-50. Don't mind me, I'm old and shit. A second prototype would soon roll out with a slightly different turret and a 100mm gun. It was originally intended to install a uh, 1200 horsepower engine, so the AMX-50 would have around the same performance of most medium tanks of the time period. A Maybach ML 295 engine and a saucer, saucer engine, diesel engine were both tested, but both engines failed to deliver the results that the French army was looking for. Fast forward to 1950, uh, uh, 1951, another AMX-50 project begun. It would be the AMX-50-120. It mounted a 120mm main gun and it was designed to combat the current Soviet IS-3 and T-10 Lenin heavy tanks of the time. The turret size was increased to fit the new 120mm gun and the armor was also increased for the whole vehicle. The weight went from 53.7 tons for the AMX 5100 to 57.8 tons for the AMX 5120. However, the AMX 5120 still didn't have an engine. Also in 1955, the suspension would be upgraded to handle the weight of the now 57.8 tons of weight. Also, a, uh, a fourth turret was designed and installed. The new turret was of a lower profile and would still mount a 120 millimeter gun. Now the engine. In 1955, a special team was formed to work on the engine. The Maybach was chosen and after some modifications, trial and error, they would accept the new 1,000 horsepower engine. In the end, a total of five AMX-50 prototypes would be produced before the project was canceled. The project would also birth other projects, like the Samua SM, the Fosh, uh, AMX Fosh, and the Lorraine 40T. The project even inspired the even heavier AMX-70 to be put on the drawing boards. However, with the improvements to shape charge ammunition and the birth of main battle tanks uh, would prove heavy tanks to be a redundant and the AMX-50 project was finally canceled in the late 1950s. So there's the history of the, a brief history of the AMX-5100 and also the AMX-5120 and the reason I did the history of both the AMX 5100 
and the AMX 5120 is as you can tell by hearing what I had to say uh, the vehicles kind of run parallel to each other uh, the project started off with the 50 the AMX uh, 5100 but would quickly be evolved into the 5120 um, and at the end of the day the project would just be cancelled um, for, for the reasons I, I gave and mostly the, the project's big problem was actually its failure with the engines uh, it, it took it took too long to find an engine for this vehicle and essentially other avenues uh, advancements in technology and things of that matter would happen and essentially the service the the ideal service of having a heavy tank like the AMX 5120 or the AMX 5100 was completely redundant um, and basically it would just that was that was the nail in the coffin for the AMX 5100 um, it would have probably been an interesting tank to see um, however I just you know I don't personally know how effective the vehicle would have been I don't really think it would have been very effective uh, considering as I said main battle tanks um, and uh, shape charge ammunition um, shape, shape charge ammunition really killed the idea for heavy tanks especially as uh, anti-tank missiles um, anti-tank missiles like the tow um, even some of the shoulder launch ones like the uh, RPGs uh, would kind of make the want of a heavy armored tank redundant and instead uh, a lot of countries would go with lighter faster uh, still well armored vehicles uh, but mostly easier to mass produce cheaper price tags and improved reliability understand that heavy tanks have always had a problem uh, with their weight uh, typically usually attributed to either poor engines or transmissions if not both um, so that being said, we're going to continue on with the replay here. I'm going to talk about the AMX 50 a bit here in the game. Now, what you have here in game is uh, the a late prototype of the AMX 5100, uh, which mounts the 100 millimeter gun. It uses the oscillating turret, as you can see here. It's more or less a supersized version of an AMX 13 turret. Um, uh, in game it has a nine shot magazine now this is fully maxed out um, it's an auto loader type gun not a ready rack gun so it doesn't reload shells into a ready rack system as you're not shooting it's a clip fed magazine um, this has nine shots and it's roughly around five shots uh, five seconds per shot for each reload and then for a full magazine I believe I have this down to around 14 and a half seconds um, stock the vehicle is very miserable and um, really has no point to it because of its its reload is actually just not worth the time um, honestly I feel the uh, M51 Isherman, the Tier 2 Premium with the 105mm gun, actually generally outperforms in some regards the AMX 50 here. However, when fully upgraded, it is a manageable vehicle to use. <coughs> I want to point out that the front of the turret is actually sloped on a relatively steep angle. And if you're hiding behind a hill, haul down. Uh, and actually have a slight tilt upward um, when you point the gun down it actually increases the sloping of the turret increasing the maximum thickness and actually giving a fairly tough turret to crack however its armor is not reliable it is a French vehicle and in all honesty of all the French vehicles this one for its tier for tier feels to be actually the best armored um, which isn't saying much because the AMX 50's armor is not extremely reliable. Um, it's just kind of one of those. It, it's good enough. It works. 
Um, its speed is not bad for a heavy tank from its time period. Um, however, it's not, uh, you know, it's still not great. It's just kind of one of those, eh, it works. Um, gun accuracy actually isn't bad. The gun penetration is actually pretty amazing. Um, Target eliminated. The alpha damage is just pretty average. Um, and it's, it's damage per minute is kind of the same way. It's just really average. And a lot of this tank is pretty much that's it. It's just average. It's not great. It's not bad. Um, if you know, if you use it in the right situations, it is powerful. However, you can't always count on being in the right situations with this tank. Um, I have a straight uh, AP load here. Um, and that's mostly due to the how currently high explosive uh, works in the game. I just didn't feel it was worth my time uh, carrying high explosive in this vehicle. Um, a feature, a couple features here I want to point out. One was the Maybach engine. If you look at the engine deck, it's very rem reminiscent to a Tiger II, the front sloping of the upper glacius and lower glacius is also reminiscent of the Tiger II, and so is the overlapping road wheels. This is one of the very early models of the AMX-50. As the suspension would change, they would change to a more uh, torsion bar style suspension. Um, this, the early, very early models of the AMX-50 took a lot of influence from actually the Tiger II. Um, and that being said, it's mostly due to the fact that the French, actually after the war was over, uh, during the German occupation was actually building uh, vehicles for the Germans, including Panther and Tiger and King Tiger. Um, and they actually, when the war ended, they actually had the blueprints for those said vehicles. Um, so that actually cut a lot of developmental out of the whole process for a new generation of French tank. Um, because essentially they had designs that they knew uh, more or less sort of worked, but definitely needed some more polish, some more upgrades. And the French would also give their influence to the to the designs. But if if you're looking at the hull and you think that looks very reminiscent to a Tiger II, um, there you go. That's that's exactly why right there. Um, so basically, we're just waiting for the game to finish up right now. We're we're all kind of searching around for this mysterious tank that does not seem to be appearing anywhere. Um, but the match is soon over. We're definitely going to get the W here. Not really sure what that M60 is doing, except for being a uh, being a bit of a goof. Oh, and I actually do want to point out too. Actually, at this point in the game, I actually only had four oh, shots in my main company. gun left. You have saved us all from certain disaster. So there we go. There's the W and the end of the replay. Let's pull up the results here, and I'll show you the final results. So I would do 10,817 damage. I spotted seven enemy vehicles and destroyed 12. There's really no words to brag about here. There's no blue star, no nothing else. I've actually only got one blue star out of this. And essentially that had to do with the fact that I had, uh, had uh, been stuck with a group of more AMX 50s. So... I do well with other AMX 50s, not so well with other tanks. Um, so total said none. I'd be number two in damage and number two in spotting, number two in XP, obviously. Um, Red just did better with her T-55 Enigma. Honestly, in all honest opinions, the T-55 Enigma is actually a better performing tank. 
at tier three than the AMX 50. It's just because of its, its composite armor and things of that nature. Um, it's just a more solid machine to run with. Um, and if you're interested in knowing more about the T55 Enigma, I do actually have another, a T55 Enigma replay, uh, that was a much earlier video, but I would say if you're interested, check that video out. But anyway, folks, this is the AMX 50 100. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the replay. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again on the next one.